Well, today we're going to be starting a new project. It's disassembling an overhead valve engine. In our small engine series, we've already done what they call the L head, where the valves are located in the engine block. This is going to be the valves located over the cylinder. And then we're going to be doing a horizontal engine, and then we're going to be doing a two cycle engine. And what we're trying to do is just get an overall feel on how these engines come apart, what their internal uh, mechanisms are, and then put them back together and make sure that they run. Uh, I just want to get a really good understanding of how these small engines are, you know, operating. You don't get that if you just read a book. So, if you're interested, follow along. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is disconnect our spark plug, like so, and remove this top cover. It's held by three 5 16 inch bolts. We'll just do that quick enough. Okay. Next we're going to be removing the air filter. Ooh, that looks terrible. We'll have to clean that up. Okay, we're going to remove the air box. It's two 7 millimeter bolts and an 8 millimeter bolt. Okay, let's remove the air box. And the hose on the back. This is the fuel line. We want to clamp that off with a locking pair of pliers. Don't do it too tight, just something similar to that. Grab that pipe clamp, pull it back, and the hose will come apart from the carburetor. All right, with that fuel line disconnected from the carburetor, we can just lift up on the gas tank. Put that into a container, release this, and you'll have emptied out your uh, fuel. Okay, now all we have to do is grab the carburetor and just pull it toward us. It should come right out, just like so. And remember our linkage here. And a little fuel will pop out. There's our carburetor. All right, we're gonna be removing this crankcase breather tube. Like so. Our linkage. secondary spring. Like that. I have two bolts right here. They're eight millimeters holding on this carburetor cover. And we'll remove that next. And keep your spacer all together. Next we're going to be removing the coil with these two quarter inch bolts. And there's an electrical connection right here. Just unplug that. There you go. We're going to be using an impact gun to remove this bolt right here. It holds our starter cup and our flywheel line. Using an air chisel placed right here and a bit of leverage, we're going to pop that flywheel straight off. Just like so. Here's our timing key. It's right here. This cover is held on by five 8 millimeter bolts that we're going to be removing right now. When you remove it, a crankcase breather cover. Our brake assembly is held on by two screws right here. They're eight millimeter, and that connects our grounding wire to our coil. <coughs> okay, this protective cover of our muffler is held on by three quarter inch bolts. We'll just remove those now. The muffler is simply held on with two 8 millimeter bolts that we're going to remove now. This engine, believe it or not, they didn't give me a drain plug for uh, 
the oil. So we're just going to remove it from the pour spout. Okay, let's remove our governor arm right here. And that's for the 10 millimeter bolt. And then just pry this open. Okay, let's remove the spark plug. That's a 5 8 inch socket. And as you can see, with spark plugs on an overhead valve, the part that screws in is much longer than a head that is an L head. See that? And that's to reach deeper into the engine to put that spark closer to the piston. This is the bracket that held our governor spring. And it's just simply an eight millimeter bolt. We're gonna remove that right now. Our valve cover is held on with three eight millimeter bolts. Let's take those off now. Gently tap that with a rubber. Comes off just like that. Okay, we're going to be removing these rocker arms now. They're held on by two 8mm bolts. And when we pull out the push rods and the springs, we want to retain all of these as a unit. Make sure that you don't interchange them. Okay? and also mark which end of the push rod goes into the engine. The head is held on with four 10 millimeter bolts. And what I like to do is crisscross it when I take it off so that I don't distort it. If you'll notice on top of the piston head, there's a small indentation right here. That's for the direction of the placement of the piston. You want that pointed toward where the magneto goes, and the magneto was mounted right here. On the bottom of our motor is a sump cover, and you'll notice that we have seven bolts that are 3 8 inch, and now we're just going to remove them and split the motor apart. When I break it loose, I uh, do a diagonal. I don't just go all the way around. All right, all of the sump bolts have been removed and I'm going to just carefully hit it with a rubber ha hammer and knock this thing apart. Uh, I've got two seals still in it and I should be able to leave them in. They're, they're going to have to be replaced, but I'm going to see if I can pull it without removing the seals. So let's see what we can do. There you go. We'll look at this closer in a moment. All right. This is our oil slinger. Pull that out. This is our cam gear. We'll pull this out. Now, when you remove your tappets, make sure that you put them back in the same hole that they came out of. You don't want to get them confused. This is our crankshaft gear. And then this is our governor right here. We'll remove that in a moment. And then we're going to remove these two bolts and remove our connecting rod. You want to mark this. You want to put a witness mark so that uh, you put it exactly together the way it came apart. Sometimes it'll only go together one way, but if not, always get in the habit of putting a witness mark right here. And uh, we're going to clean all this up in the parts washer, uh, analyze it, and then we'll uh, put it back together. By rotating the crankshaft, 
I can get my ratchet in there. It's two eight millimeter bolts, and I've already put my witness mark on it. And just remove it, and then we'll remove our, our crankshaft. All right, pushing up on our connecting rod, I'm pushing out our piston. Here it comes. There she is. And now our crankshaft comes right out. The only thing left is our governor. And I don't think I want to remove that just because of this uh, difficult uh, spring washer. You know, they, don't, they don't sit really well. We're going to take a screwdriver. I'll show you. I'll remove one just to show you how easy they are to pop out. Taking a large screwdriver, put it up against your seal, and just pop it right out like that. And we'll remove the one that's in the sump also the same way. All right, let's clean these parts up. I thought I would just briefly discuss the two different types of engines we have here. This is the one we're currently taking apart, and it's called the overhead valve. And you'll notice in the head are the exhaust and intake valves. Okay. In the engine that we took apart last time, the valves are not in the head. Okay. That's the primary difference between the two types of motors. In the motor that we took apart last time, the valves were in the engine block itself, where these valves will sit over the piston. If you remember when the valves were located in the engine block, it was kind of difficult to remove the valves. You needed a spring compressor, uh, a little bit tricky. This engine is super easy to remove. When you have an overhead valve, all you have to do is remove the little caps. And if you notice right here, we have the same type of retainer. It's called the keyway. All you have to do is press down and move it to the side. That's it. The valve has been removed. And that's all there is to it. And you want to retain this as a, a complete set. Don't be interchanging the uh, retainer and the springs and the cap with the exhaust valve. Nothing to it. All right, that wraps up our disassembly of this overhead valve engine. I think I'm going to make a short video just overviewing all the small parts and how they interact with each other and then yeah, that'll be very short and then we'll reassemble it and see it run. I'll catch you on the next one.